Inke dink, 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 inke Any more questions? What's with the steely dad? No idea. It's always play. Seems to relax people. Let's do this. Yes, left. This will tickle a bit. I could ask you about this before we actually start taping, Basil. You got um, you got a bullfighter's hat on. Have you been to Pamplona? Have you been there for the running of the um, the running of the bulls? Oh, okay. Oh, good morning. Welcome to Basil. <laughs> good evening. Good whatever. Welcome to Basil Buddha Cat Presents. My name is David Stevenson. I'll be Basil's co-host, interpreter, and chief gopher. And we're having this discussion about... Um, I asked Basil about this... Um, looks like a looks like a matador's hat or a toreador's hat or a something door's hat. And uh, says, no, it's not. And it's not from Pamplona. Basil's been there before, but um, he was not a visitor to uh, to Madrid for the running of the Bulls this year. He says that the hat is actually a slightly misshapen Mickey Mouse hat. And he got it. He was actually at... Um, Jimmy's Jimmy's uh, backyard uh, next door. Jimmy's Jimmy annually has his um, running of the mice, and Basil got this as a souvenir because Basil was um, a participant in the running of the mice this year in uh, Jimmy's backyard next door. And uh, we know it's Jimmy's backyard next door because because on the mailbox in front there's an arrow which points around the side of the house, and on the arrow it says. Jimmy's backyard next door. So Basil, Basil was at this uh, running of the mice and brought back his um, mouse, either a mouseketeer or a mouse ador hat. <laughs> you said we wanted to do. You wanted to do. You wanted to incorporate that into your uh, into the news broadcast. And uh, and I, I'm not sure. Whether we can actually say this on uh, on Comcast um, public television, um, Basil says, uh, <laughs> says, um, yeah. Well, you don't have to say, screw Fox News. Here is Cat News, because I, Basil Buddha Cat. Just said it for you. Okay. Well, I'm. You know, uh, we're we're um, we're doing a, a news broadcast, and uh, we've been doing this now since July 17th of um, last year. So we're just about at our anniversary of um, Cat News. And Basil's got an interesting uh, news broadcast for you tonight. He wants to start off with um, something happening. On the United States Mexican border, there have been some um, some children which have um, been transported up from uh, Central America through Mexico and are coming across the border. And it appears that those children have been victimized in uh, in the countries and the towns that they're that they're from, and uh, threatened. Their lives are threatened. Their families are threatened. Um, and their parents have chosen to, to get them as far as the United States-Mexican border and then send them across. And uh, there's, of course, as always, there's um, at least two perspectives on this matter. 
And uh, one of the perspectives um, is um, well, I want to I want to make a mention of um, Basil says he's been itching to have me read and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. But Basil's not so keen on that book anymore because apparently the uh, the theme of the book has been co-opted, he says, by a fellow by the name of... Um, well, let me put it this way. His, um, he, he calls in periodically, or his wife calls in periodically, and his wife refers her, to herself as um, Joe Arpaio's wife, as her first name. And uh, when we get calls in from someone who purportedly is Joe Arpaio, he refers to himself as Joe Arpaio's wife's husband, Joe. Okay. So at any rate, so um, what's what's going on with this with this book? I mean, should we even be talking about something? It sounds like it's um, not really not really in very pleasant taste, but. Um, Okay. Well, Basil says, you know, you you have to you have to talk about stuff and get the word out there, and um, even if you've got to be um, a little bit um, harsh with your language in doing that. And uh, Basil's 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 never been one to um, want to use um, provocative language on his uh, screw Fox News. Here comes. Cat news broadcasts, but he says that um, that the sheriff Joe Arpaio um, has written a book that's um, that's a uh, sort of a satirical takeoff on uh, uh, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street by our good friend Dr. Seuss, who's um, you had him on the phone, had him on the phone uh, from the hereafter on occasion, and. Um, well, you know what? Maybe, maybe we ought to um, demure. What do you think, Basil? It's uh, what do you think it might be? Basil says it's on the big. It's on the big phone. So, because it's on the big phone, it's somewhat of importance. Because we always have the um, the uh, middle-sized Nickelodeon phone for people that are of moderate importance. We have the uh, what we call the Inky Dinky phone. For people that um, don't don't matter too very much in in the scheme of things, but uh, yes, uh, good evening. This uh, welcome to Basil Buddha Cat presents uh, Basil. It's amazing, almost like clockwork. Of course, from up there, apparently you can uh, you can see all, hear all, know all, and uh, so they're they're watching us. And and uh, yes, uh, uh, Tweety, let's uh, confirm via. Your string of zeros and ones, and uh, Tweety says uh, Tweety's holding up the the cue card, which says yes. In fact, it is the uh, the uh, hereafter phone number of our good friend Ted Geisel, Doctor Seuss. Okay, um, have you been uh, watching the broadcast to uh, to tell us uh, or to, to what do you think of this uh, this business about? Um, about uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio's wife's husband, Joe Arpaio, um, and his um, his book. Uh, Dr. Sue says he's had the opportunity to um, to take a look at the book, and uh, he uh, now has a, a, a two part theme for the show. What's that? It says um, screw Fox News, screw. Sheriff Joe Arpaio's wife's husband's Sheriff Joe's book, um, and to think that I saw it on Rio Grande Street. Okay, um, and uh, was there anything in particular in the book that you found offensive? You know what exactly? You know what? Uh, what in there uh, caught, caught your eye and uh, caused you to uh, to want to discuss the matter? It says. Um, it's the part where uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio uses his um, his uh, limited English skills and uh, has the lines. Um, this is uh, talking about um, immigrants, uh, Mexican immigrants, immigrants from South Central America um, that come across the Rio Grande, particularly about these kids. Says um, 
stealing our jobs, raping our women, traveling in mobs. And, uh, well, I, I can see, yeah, you've, I, apparently um, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to take offense to that. Um, but, um, oh, oh, hold on, we've got, uh, let me put you on hold, because we have a call, I think we have a call coming in, the light's flashing on the inky dinky phone. Hold on, let me put you on hold for a second. Thank you. Good evening, welcome to Basil Buddha Cat Presents. <laughs> we should have kept uh, Dr. Seuss on the line. Well, we have him on the line, but he's on hold. But, uh, Basil, we've got a um, frequent caller into the show. Uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio's wife's husband, Joe. Um, and uh, he wants to get into the discussion about his book. He says... Um, Absolutely true. Those three charges, uh, starting with stealing our jobs, absolutely correct. He, um, he says, in fact, he gave a famous, that's Sheriff Joe Arpaio, gave a famous speech, and he, he titles it, Sheriff Joe Arpaio's I Have a Dream speech. And uh, he wants to quote a little bit of that from, uh, and uh, in the meanwhile, Tweedy has checked and uh, found that yes, it in fact, uh, it in fact had the proper uh, combination of zeros and ones, and uh, it's coming in from uh, the Rio Grande. So it's, it is in fact as Sheriff Joe Arpaio's wife's husband's Sheriff Joe Arpaio's uh, cell phone, as opposed to his wife's cell phone, because she's called in on a number of occasions. In fact, um, he's called in on a few occasions and. Uh, Pretended to uh, to be her, but that's beside the point. Um, so, um, so this speech, um, which uh, you describe as Sheriff Joe Arpaio's "I Have a Dream" speech, um, we've got it here. You sent us the uh, the text of it, and I'll read a little bit of it. Uh, my heroes, Barry Goldwater, and the rest of them, told us the same thing about blacks, and. Uh, are you referring back to the uh, business of stealing our jobs, um, et cetera, et cetera, traveling in mobs? said, yeah, absolutely, yeah. He says, um, and he says, just as right as they were about blacks doing those things, then uh, Barry Goldwater is also right about, uh, about uh, immigrants doing the same thing. And not, not exactly immigrants. Because um, Sheriff Joe Pio is um, is in fact um, the uh, the grandson of an immigrant, and uh, as many of us here, I'm the grandson of an immigrant from Ireland. Uh, my dad's uh, parents came here from Ireland and uh, quickly assimilated into um, into the uh, into the routine, and quickly were United States citizens. At any rate, so um, hmm, okay. Okay, well, um, the phone's lit up again, but uh, but before we go to that, I have to take care of the obligatory um, the obligatory uh, stuff that, uh, that that pays the bills. So uh, I'm gonna put you on hold for a second. I've got Dr. Seuss on hold, and we'll continue the conversation. Okay, first of all, with the P added in, paw root beer. I couldn't put any in your um, in your water dish because the because uh, the pig was in there. Okay. Schweppes. Schweppervescence. And it says uh, since 1783, which uh, puts some um, paw root beer kind of in the newbie role since 1919. So, um, here, now the picky's out of the dish. Let me pour you a little, uh, little shrub of essence. You can use your imaginary straw to try some. I'll take a little sip. Ah, shrub of essence. And, um, we also have, um, of course, our old standby corporate sponsor, Dermacil Labs, Dermacil, now with 25% more. 
And uh, the up and coming one. Well, you know what? We've got both of them here, so. Eight ball. And eight ball. Now with 50% more ball. Thank you. So, um, let's see. Okay, um, okay, we, okay, we've got Sheriff Joe Arpaio's wife's husband, Sheriff Joe Arpaio's, Sheriff Joe Arpaio on hold. And we have a, we have a call in, um, and it's, it's from, on the Inky Dinky phone, so it's probably not of much consequence. But, um, Tweety, you got to check this, uh, proper sequence of zeros and ones, uh, to see if it's from the hereafter, and then narrow that down, and, uh, Sure enough. Okay. Tweety says it's in fact this, the ghost of uh, George Clayton Wallace. And uh, do you have something to add on this um, this uh, immigrant um, immigrant issue, or on the um, on Sheriff Joe Arpaio's uh, book, or on Sheriff Joe Arpaio's "I Have a Dream" speech? Okay, um, okay, the ghost of George Wallace is telling me that, um, tor- that, well, I can't say that on, uh, I cannot say that, and I will not say that on, uh, on, uh, public television, but let's just say it's a three-letter word, um, only one of the three letters is contained in President Barack Hussein Obama, but, um, George Wallace is telling me that um, that was not Barry Goldwater who um, who was doing those famous lines. It was George Wallace, and George Wallace is uh, going to sue Barry Goldwater's uh, spirit and sue uh, Sheriff Joe Pyle for copyright infringement. Um, and uh, says that was those were his lines. Okay, thanks for calling in. Okay. Do we also want to do the um, the Tootsie Roll? Basil says, Nat, that joke got stale a while back. Okay, it's the um, it's the Inky Dink phone again. Okay, um, Tweety, check it out again from the hereafter, apparently. And a different voice from... Um, from America's segregationist past. So, um, Tweety says, um, you tell me who you think it is, who they claim to be, and I'll confirm or deny. Okay, Tweety, it's, um, it claims to be Senator Strom Thurmond from, uh, South Carolina. Um, Tweety says, yeah, yep, you got him. Okay, um, good evening, uh, Senator uh, Thurmond, I guess after after you passed, you still uh, you still have the title. Says uh, Dang Tootin, and uh, that George Wallace is a liar. Says those lines, starting with stealing our jobs, and ending in traveling in mobs. Those are his lines. He's the one that that warned uh, warned whites about those uh, those prospects when. Uh, when blacks began to accumulate a little bit more um, more uh, power and the ability to vote and things of that nature. Um, he also says that um, he also says that even though Strom Thurmond fathered fathered a child with a black woman, in spite of that fact, he says he doesn't believe that the sanctity of marriage includes interracial marriage. It says um, that uh, white Anglo-Saxon three-piece suited Jesus who uh, does a mighty fine course in uh, wealth building, he, um, he wouldn't approve of that. So, um, so since uh, Strom Thurmond believes that, uh, he's going to go right along with that and uh, and that's it. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's going to um, going to uh, discuss or call in or, or offer some ideas on 
on how to handle the um, the, uh, the the situation on the Rio Grande border, where uh, where uh, children from Central America have been uh, have been coming across the border, um, ushered to the border by their parents and then uh, or relatives, and uh, coming across. Um, okay, well, we're going we're really bogging down, so we're gonna take uh, take a moment and uh, do sad cat diary or sad dog diary or or something or other. Then Basil Buddha Cat presents. Be back in a minute. Dear Diary, the authorities have removed the pair of black pants from the couch. There is no longer any place for me to sleep. I have vomited three times in protest, but there is no sign that anything will change. My only other hope for rest is on the computer keyboard, which is nearby, but sadly no one is currently using it. I will wait. Dear Diary, my food dish is now only half full. It is obvious that I will soon starve to death. I've been overrun by these dead people sometime in 1954. How's staying an option? 150,000 people die every day. The system wasn't designed to handle that kind of volume. Welcome to the big league. R.I.P.D. Boston. <laughs> Before you are the greatest law officers who ever lived and died. We're the third biggest precinct in the force. What's the first? I have repeatedly tried to draw attention to my predicament with the authorities, but they are clearly either stupid, deaf, or just cruel. This may be my last entry. Dear Diary, it has come to my attention that the authorities have two hands, but seem to have made it the sadistic policy only to pet me with one of them at a time. Half of love is just low, which is how I feel. My spirit is breaking. Dear Diary, I've decided to plead with the authorities to rub my belly. I think it'll do me good in my current condition. I would like to receive two rubs exactly. A third one and I will bite the shit out of them as per protocol. Wish me luck. Dear Diary, the water dish continues to vex me. The authorities seem to taunt me with this cruel liquid that has neither smell nor distinguishing visual markings. A sad anniversary. This is the 900th day that my nose has been unintentionally wetted. Dear Diary, yesterday I put in a simple request regarding the door to the garden. But, seemingly out of sheer spite, the authorities refused to hold the door open long enough for me to decide whether to go outside or inside or outside or inside. Dear Diary, the authorities have punished me for taking a crap on the living room floor. This, despite my efforts to distribute the litter evenly throughout the house, I am convinced that they are madmen, devoid of reason. Dear Diary, the squirrel is back again today. It mocks me. I will try and release my mind from this torment and groom myself for four hours. Dear Diary, I have been stalking an insect on the wall for the past three days now. All of my attempts to capture it have been thwarted. However, today, on further inspection, I found out that the insect was in fact a thumbtack. There is no logic in this place. Dear Diary, it is three in the morning. The authorities have closed the door to the bedroom. I can only assume that they have forgotten about me and have left me here to die. As a last resort, I will stand post for the rest of the night and sing the song of my people in hopes that they rescue me. Dear Diary, when the authorities poop, I have tried to poop in the bathtub litter box with them in a show of solidarity. I have yet to experience any gratitude. Dear Diary, my attempts to destroy the terrible plant have all been for naught. Somehow, almost as if by some evil magic, a new one has appeared in its place. I will have to start over now. Like Sisyphus, I am bound to hell. I've been overrun by these dead people sometime in 1954. How's staying an option? 150,000 people die every day. The system wasn't designed to handle that kind of volume. Welcome to the big league. R.I.P.D. Boston. <laughs> Before you are the greatest law officers who ever lived and died. We're the third biggest precinct in the force. What's the first? I'll tell you. No! 
I'm the only one willing to leap a love. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you, Jesus. Roy! What? He was going for the door. I'll plant a gun on him if it makes you feel any better. Would you like to take this up with Eternal Affairs? We both know what this is about, don't we, honey, Pot? Not the time, Roy. Why not have it out now? I'm comfortable. Meet your new partner, Nick Walker. We've been over this before. I'm a one-man operation. Not a choice, Roy. It has occurred to me today that my dearest human has never sniffed my backside. I must bond with him in different ways. Like my father always used to say, if you want someone to look you in the eye, make sure that your mouth smells exactly like your butt. It's difficult to argue with that logic. And so I have eaten some rotting earthworms in preparation for my dear human's return, as well as one of his socks. Dear diary, it's not so much that I miss my testicles. I know it's a rite of passage in our pack, and I'm sure that my dearest human has had his removed as well. But when that one bulldog comes to the dog park and parades his testicles around, I can't help but notice how Ginger looks at them. I love Ginger. To be fair, I will admit, he has a fine-smelling butthole. Dear diary, the cat is a curious, magical creature. It's as if a teddy bear mated with a cactus, and it's much less fun to play with than it would appear. And yet it poops delicious candy into a box of pea-flavored sprinkles. Dearest human guards these treats jealously, often harvesting them into a barrel. But I will admit that I sneak one from time to time. They are delicious. Forgive me. Dear diary, this is the 733rd day that I have tried to test what Cat swore to me was true. Namely, that if you hump anything long enough, you will find a vagina. So far, the results have been mixed. My dearest human's leg vagina has not revealed itself. However, I'm almost certain that I felt something on the brown teddy bear. More tests are needed. Dear diary, I have yet to see my dearest human poop anywhere. I suspect he may not know how. I have resolved to try and teach him when we patrol the neighborhood each day in search of men with hats and beards. It is embarrassing to do in public, but he must learn somehow. I fear he will die of constipation if I don't succeed. Fortunately, my dearest human seems to show some interest and is now collecting my feces in a small bag. Soon. They say they'd rob your grandma blind on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Fritter her, her away her Medicare on Wall Street. And pharma oil and their pet fox don't care if she lives in a box. So long as they wear platinum jocks on Wall Street, on Wall Street. Meow.